Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sunday Online from St John's Vicarage. It's very good to have you worshipping with me this morning. Let's be quiet for a moment as we prepare our hearts. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God, of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your Spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light, and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. It's me reading the Bible readings today, and our first one is from Acts chapter 1, verses 15 to 17, and then 21 to the end. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, together the crowd numbered about 120 people, and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us throughout the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabas, who was also known as Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them and the lot fell to Matthias and he was added to the 11 apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our Gospel reading this morning is from John, chapter 17, beginning at verse 6. Jesus said, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete. In themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. Not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, 
so that they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Father, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Our hearts and set them on fire with love for you, for your name's sake. Amen. Families. Fantastic small communities, can't they? Full of love, acceptance and joy. Or they can be completely dysfunctional and broken. And I guess most are somewhere between the extremes. Sometimes a family can be a loving together unit one minute and implode the next. Maybe the loss of a member by death or desertion or the addition of a new member by birth or adoption or marriage changes all the dynamics. Sometimes the apple cart is upset. Families can and do often experience great joy and laughter and love. But sometimes they can be very hard work. And it's the same with church families. Sometimes things seem to go swimmingly and we sense an amazing unity of purpose. We all sing in harmony and we're literally singing from the same hymn sheet. But sometimes, especially in times of change and transition, when different opinions and preferences come to the surface, we sometimes have to work very hard at maintaining a unity and loving one another. We know we must always be open to newcomers every time a newcomer arrives they'll change the dynamics in our church community. We never know who God might bring through the door each week. I've been watching the first series of The Chosen, a TV dramatisation of the life of Jesus and his disciples which tries to follow quite closely the biblical narrative that we have in the Gospels. So I've seen the episodes in which he heals Mary Magdalene and we've seen the miraculous catch of fish and the calling of Peter, Simon Peter and Andrew and James and John. We've seen them form quite a tight knit group and in the background we've also seen Matthew, the tax collector, going about his work, working for the hated Romans, the occupiers of the day, hated by his whole community because he's effectively a traitor, working for the enemy. That makes him unclean. He's bringing shame on his family and he attracts only derision from the community, the Jewish community around him. And then in episode seven, see Jesus say to him while he's sitting in his tax booth, Matthew, son of Alphaeus, follow me. Jesus says, yes, you. Without hesitation, Matthew shuts up shop, hands the key back to his Roman protector and heads off after Jesus. But the rest of the disciples, that tight knit little group of fishermen are stunned. And Peter remonstrates with Jesus. Wait, what are you doing? Have you got any idea what this guy's done? Do you even know him? I don't get it. Jesus says to Peter, you didn't get it when I chose you either. But Peter says, this is different. I'm not a tax collector. To which Jesus replies, get used to difference. Difference isn't easy, is it? Most of us like being with people who are like us, or at least hold similar values. When we meet for the first time, often we look for connections, things we have in common. Do we like football? Do we support the same team? Do we read the same newspaper or watch the same TV programmes? Do we vote for the same party? Will we leave or remain? 
And in church groups, we may want to check out one another's theology or churchmanship or worship songs, sermons or sacraments, simplicity or ceremony. Crunch question of our time. What's your view on same-sex relationships? And perhaps underlying all these questions, there's a sense of, are we on the same page? Are you an ally? Are you on my side? Are we going to get on? Jesus chose people who were different, different backgrounds, different lifestyles, different values, different personalities, different gifts. Not people who would naturally have been friends. But he knew their hearts. He saw what was inside them. He knew who he wanted on his team. And they had to learn to live with one another. More than that, they had to learn to love one another, as we heard last week or the week before, love one another as I have loved you. No one ever said being a Christian and following Jesus was going to be easy. John's, we have a huge diversity of backgrounds and life experiences, and each of our faith journeys will have been unique. At our church leadership meeting last week, uh, we each had two minutes to share our testimonies, our stories of how we came to faith in Jesus. I had a definite conversion experience as an adult. Others grew up within Christian families, always going to church. One came in through a church choir. Even those who'd grown up in Christian families had different stories of how they had actually come to a personal faith in Jesus Christ. And it was a joy to hear all those different stories, to see how God was working in different ways in each of our lives to bring Jesus. In St John's there's a great diversity of gifts and passions and preferences. God makes us each unique and yet he's called us to be part of a family at St John's. One is part of the, the church family by accident. God has called us to be a family together. How can we be a united family when we're all so different? Gospel reading this morning, we heard Jesus praying for his disciples. At this point, he knew that he wasn't going to be with them much longer. This is the night before he's going to be crucified. And up until this time, he's been their leader and their teacher, and he's kept them safe. When they've argued and fallen out, arguing about who's the greatest among them, he's chastised them, told them that whoever wants to be the greatest among them must be the servant of all. He washed their feet and told them to do the same for one another to be. Uh, those who serve one another. And he prays, first of all, for protection from the evil one. And I think that's because the main tactic of the evil one is to sow seeds of division, disunity. He does it in nuclear families. Often we're at our worst in our own homes. And what Satan does is he magnifies all the negative things and makes us focus on those. He blows small things out of all proportion in our minds, stokes fires of resentment and bitterness. He loves it when we hold grudges. And that's why Jesus prays for his disciples for protection from the evil one. Elsewhere in scripture, we're told to resist the devil. That's what James says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Resist him in Jesus' name, because Jesus' name is powerful. Both our readings today reference Judas, who succumbed to the wiles of the evil one, betraying Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. We can argue about whether he had any choice in that or whether he was predestined 
to fulfill what scripture said. But that's a sermon challenge for another day. Our focus today is how do we maintain unity in the midst of diversity and in the face of opposition from the evil one? Well, Jesus prayed and so must we. That has to be our first line of defence or attack. Keep us united, Lord. Help us to love one another, even though we are so different. Help us to see your image, even in our awkward brothers and sisters, to see them as gifts to this family, to look for all that's good in them, to see them as godly, or to see all within them that is godly. And when there are quarrels and fallings out, we must pray for reconciliation, Against the divisions, prayer, powerful weapon. Secondly, we read the Bible and we learn from it together. Jesus prays, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Find guidance in God's word and we apply it to our own lives and try to live in accordance with God's commands. His commands that we be holy. Love your enemies. Bless those who persecute you, even if they're in your own family. Forgive one another as you have been forgiven. Peter asking Jesus, how many times must I forgive my brother? Seven times. Not seven, but 70 times seven, said Jesus. In other words, you've got to keep on forgiving. Don't hold grudges. Keep forgiving because that's what God does. Keep showing mercy. Don't let bitter roots grow up. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. If you have something against a brother or sister, go and talk to them about it. Be slow to anger and swift to show mercy because that's what God does. Wash one another's feet, even the stinky ones and the deformed ones the ones that belong to people who you don't like very much. Remember, Jesus washed Judas's feet before Judas left to betray him. Reading God's word and doing what it says, allow him to sanctify you by his word to make you holy. Thirdly and lastly, keep being filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit who brings unity. It's the Spirit who puts our hearts in tune with God's heart and therefore with one another's hearts. He moves among us and within us. And within us, both individually and corporately, he grows the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. It's the Spirit who will enable us to grow a love for even the more difficult members of our families. Can't do it without him, but with him, all things are possible. Think again of the disciples that Jesus chose and think of Matthew and how the other disciples would have reacted to Jesus' choice. To how Jesus transformed Matthew's life Cold gave him a new life, a new purpose. How he used him to reach other tax collectors and sinners, other rejects and misfits. And how many lives have been changed through the centuries by Matthew's written testimony. Matthew means gift from God. To the other apostles, though it took them a while to realise it. Think about the church family that you belong to. Can you see your brothers and sisters as gifts? Can you see and value the unique contribution that each of them bring? Let's pray that we will be one, just as Jesus and the Father and the Spirit were one. Let's allow God to sanctify us 
by his truth as we study the Bible and apply it to our lives. Let's keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit, allowing him to grow in us those fruits that will help us to maintain the bonds of love and peace, to be one, just as Jesus and the Father are one. Let's pray. Lord, help us to love one another as you love us. Help us to be one as you and the Father are one. Thank you, Lord, that prayer is a powerful weapon. Help us, help us at St John's to maintain a unity. Agreement, Lord, please bring heat. That's a determination to stick together, to value our differences, to celebrate them. Invite us in a love for you and a desire to follow wherever you lead. In your mercy, hear our prayer. worship together now as we sing No Longer Slaves.
Let's pray together. Loving Lord, thank you that you've made it possible for us to be, to become children of God, born into your family, and now brothers and sisters in Christ. It's when we allow our selfishness and sin to bring disunity and conflict in our families. Help us to let go of any resentments and bitterness and to forgive those who have hurt us. There are conflicts around us, Lord. Help us to be peacemakers. Help us to discern and to resist any attempts by the evil one to sow disunity among us. Help us to seek and find your mind on issues when we disagree. Pray for the Church of England, so often in the news, more because of divisions than because of unity. Forgive us, Lord, and make us one. Give us are in error, show us and lead us in paths of righteousness. For your name's sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you prayed that your disciples would not be taken out of the world, but that they would be protected from the evil one. We pray for our brothers and sisters who face fierce persecution because they follow you. Protect them from the evil one. Firm in their faith and united with the brothers and sisters in their home churches and nations. May they find strength in you and know the empowering of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Encourage through the time between Ascension Day and Pentecost to pray for people to come to faith in you as part of the Thy Kingdom Come initiative. So Lord, as we hold a moment of silence now, please lay on our hearts the people you want us to be praying for, those who don't yet know you or who aren't following you. And help us to pray for them. Thank you, Lord, for those people who prayed for us to come to faith in you. Perhaps for godparents or parents, Christians around us, Lord, thank you for their prayers. Keep us faithful in prayer for others who don't yet know you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for the three churches in this parish, St John's, St Peter's and St Margaret's. Help us to recognise and value the different styles of worship and to find strength in those differences. Help us in PCC discussions to seek what's best for the whole parish, not just the churches to which we belong. Thank you for the unity that our Rector Mike has brought among us. We pray for him in his role both as Rector of this parish and as Area Dean, that he would be a figure that unites the churches of our deanery. Following the conference yesterday, we pray that you would bless the efforts of all the churches in this diocese to develop their children's and youth ministries. And Lord, we're so thankful that you've brought Anna and Ben to work among us here. Bless, grow and strengthen the teams that they lead. Bring to our churches others who have the gifts and abilities we need to nurture the faith of our children and young people. We also pray that you would bring a new chair of the Properties Committee and a new parish administrator as Nigel and Caroline step down. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At St John's we continue to pray that the repairs to the roof would be completed swiftly and professionally, and that you'd keep our roofers safe as they work. And as requested by them, we pray for Bobby and for Sid asking for their healing. Pray for our wider community of Caversham and we pray against the schemes of the evil one to lure youngsters into gangs involved in drug dealing and county lines. Bless the efforts of our police force and others to counter those schemes. Bless the work of the Weller Centre and all those organisations that seek to build strong, wholesome communities and to support family life. We pray for Messy Church at the Weller Centre this afternoon. 
May all those who come hear your call to follow you, just as Matthew did. May they know the invitation is to them, that you want them on your team. At national level, we thank you for Care for the Family and other charities that support families facing challenges of different kinds. Pray for social workers, teachers, medics, and all who are involved in the caring professions in our community. Help them to spot any who are in particular need and to make the right interventions when they're needed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Looking further afield into the wider world, we continue to pray for peace in the Middle East, Ukraine, and in so many African countries where tribal conflicts rage. Lord, may your church in these nations shine as a beacon in the darkness. And please answer our prayers for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Quiet now, do pray for any situation where there's division and pain, whether that's at international, national or local level, or within your own family. Just lift to the Lord anywhere or anyone who's on your heart today. Lord, in all these situations we've named before you, please bring healing, reconciliation and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The collect for today. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Spirit, kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Concludes our service for this morning. Thanks for being with me. Just a couple of notices today. As I mentioned in the prayers, we have Messy Church this afternoon at the Weller Centre, 4 till 6 p.m. Do come along if you would like to and uh, do pray for those who do come. We'll be uh, looking at the theme of what it means to follow Jesus. Also, as I mentioned in the prayers, we're encouraged between Ascension Day, which was Thursday, and Pentecost, uh, which is next Sunday, uh, to pray for people to come to faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, so can I encourage, encourage you uh, maybe to write down the names of five people who you know who aren't yet following Jesus, or who aren't at the moment following Jesus, that they might hear his call and turn back to him. That's it for this week. Thanks so much for being with me. Uh, God willing, I'll be here again next Sunday for Pentecost. Great week. I'll see you next Sunday. Bye for now.